Hello everyone, uh, this is Lil Civ here. I'm going to be doing a quick little demo of my uh, Rust server installer script. Um, it lets you install a Rust server uh, with the choice of the release branch or staging branch, uh, with Oxide or without Oxide, uh, custom map support, or just procedural maps, um, all done within one batch file. It'll install everything for you. So I'm going to be doing this on Windows Server 2019, but this script will work on Windows 10, Windows Server, or even Windows 11 for the future. So first things first, we're going to need to go grab the script from GitHub. So I will have this linked in the description. And once we're at this GitHub page here, all we got to do is download a zip of all the contents. We can open up the zip, get out of Chrome, and pull this installation over here. So you'll be left with this Rust server installer.bat file. All you got to do is run this, and the installation basically starts. So it's going to ask you, where do you want Steam CMD installed? Um, I'm going to do this as if this is a brand new installation. There's nothing on this machine at all and I'm going to install everything uh, in folders on the desktop. So as you can see, there's nothing on the desktop right now, but I'm going to put it in a folder here. Put it in a folder called Steam CMD. You can see it makes the folder. Um, it's going to download the required files here, and it will say Steam CMD installed. If we open this folder, we'll have Steam CMD in, within this folder, but we don't have to do anything with this. So next thing it's going to do is ask, do you want to install a staging branch server? Um, you have the option to do that. In most cases, you're probably not going to do that unless you're doing some testing. So I'm going to say no here. Next thing it's going to do is ask, where do you want the actual Rust server itself installed? So I'm going to put this on another folder on the desktop. I'm going to put it in a folder called Rust Server. It does support spaces and file names, so that can work. Now, this part uh, is basically where it's going to start installing the Rust Server itself. This is going to take a while, um, so I will go ahead and speed this process up. Okay, and once the server is installed, it will tell you success app 258550 is installed, and it's going to ask, do we want to install Oxide? So if you're not familiar, Oxide is the modding framework for Rust. It lets you install custom plugins. Um, it's all done through umod.org, and there's a bunch of stuff you could do. So in this case, I am going to install Oxide uh, so we could install plugins later on. As you click yes, it's going to start the download for Oxide and it's going to automatically upload it to the server folder so you don't have to do anything. Perfect. Now Oxide is installed. It's going to ask, are we going to use a custom map file? Now, you can use a custom map. Uh, this script will support it. You just have to have that map file already created and hosted somewhere like Dropbox with a direct download link. Um, in this case, I'm not going to be using a custom map. I'll just use a procedural one. All right, now we're going to get into the startup file creation. So if you don't choose anything, if you don't specify anything uh, for these values, it's going to do what the default is listed here. So this is asking for the server port. Um, I'm going to change these values just so you could see that it does actually work if you put something in. Um, I'll do 28020, and it's going to ask next for the Archon port. I'll do 28021. Now the server identity, this is basically just an identifier for the startup file so that it knows which server it's starting. Um, all of the, the saves, the map saves, stuff like that will be saved in the identity folder. So I'm just going to call this test server. Now the map seed, that's something you could specify if you go to rustmaps.com. You could pick your map seed, uh, world size and everything. So I'm just going to do a random one and world size. Again, that's something you could specify. I'll do 4250. Max players, how many people you want to be able to join your server. By default, it's set to 150. I'll set this to 75. Host name, 
what the server looks like in the server browser. So in this case, I'll just call it test server. Description, we'll put this is a test and Archon password. This is important. You want to make sure that this password is secure. Because if someone gets a hold of this password and they know your Archon port, they could basically uh, run any high level server commands that they want. So make sure it's something secure. So this is just a demonstration. Server URL, this is the um, kind of like view website link that they have in the server browser. Um, a lot of people will put their Discord link, or if you have an actual server website, you could put that here. In this case, I'm not going to specify anything because I don't have anything to put here. And header image is another one. Um, header images is what the server like logo looks like in the browser. Um, there's kind of a, a little reminder here that your image must be only the picture at 1024 by 512 size, and it has to be, most importantly, it has to be a website with just the picture. It can't be anything else, like an, an imager or anything. So in this case, I'll leave this blank. And just like that, we're pretty much done. So it says, all finished. You'll see two batch files in, this is your Rust server directory. And it creates two files. So it'll create start server.bat, which will launch the server. And then it will also create update server.bat, which will update your server come for swipe. Um, that update file will also update Oxide if you chose to install it like we did. So press any key to continue and that closes out. Now we can jump into our Rust server folder that we set up here. And you will see all of the files are in here. You have start server.bat and update server.bat. So if we take a quick look at start server.bat, if we just edit it, we could see um, all of those values that we specified, the map seed, the server port, the host name, the description, all of that got passed through here into this file. Then if we take a look at the update server, um, I wouldn't recommend changing anything in here, but this basically just calls Steam CMD, uh, tells it where to install the server, and does an update. And then right after that is done, it will do a curl on uh, Oxide, so that Oxide will get updated. And I'll show you just as a demonstration how this works. We don't really need to do this since we just installed the server, but you can see here how this works. It says Rust is already up to date. Press Enter. It's going to do an install for Oxide now. It'll download the file, then it's going to extract it in a second here. And then it deletes the downloaded file. So then Oxide's up to date. And pretty much ready to go. So then all you got to do to start the server is just double click start server.bat. Leave it because on the first setup, uh, it can take a little bit before anything is displayed here. But uh, we'll just kind of let this run through. Okay, and just like that, our server is running. Um, so if you recall, I chose 28020 for the server port so we could verify that and just make sure it got passed through. And as we can see, server port is 28020. The host name is set to test server. Um, you can check the description. And the description is this is a test because that's what it was set to. So just like that, you have a... Uh, completely running and working Rust server. Um, the script will continue to be updated as uh, more things come up, but uh, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. You could leave a comment, open an issue on GitHub, or just message me on Discord. My Discord's going to be on that GitHub page. Thanks.